Hi everybody you're listening to the Khan Dan podcast by the You Podcast team a bi-weekly podcast revisiting the movies of Aamir Khan, Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan. Every show we pick a random year from three decades of collectively 300 films the Khans have done and let our listeners vote which movie we should talk about. So it's entirely up to you. Pick a team, make a vote, take us down nostalgia lane, punish us or make us reassess a movie we dismissed. We love the Khans, most of us sometimes. And we would love for you all to be part of our Khandan because when it comes to the Khans in Bollywood, nothing, nothing else, else really, really matters. matters. Welcome back to Khandan. Um, we are uh, reviewing Ghulam this episode. Uh, Ghulam from the, the Epiglottis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we uh we put the poll up this was a listener's choice we had uh, a few people um, uh, we were, so we've got a whole list of movies that our uh, listeners have recommended to us and uh, this was one of them uh, and sometimes we just put it together in a poll this went ahead with chalte chalte and uh, dil tera aashiq and this was a pick of our listener abdullah and uh, this was not my bias pushing the muslim vote forward uh, this is just naturally happened <laughs> um, identity politics on khandan podcast <laughs> uh, so yeah we we're talking about ghulam here uh, 1998 um i it rarely happens but i I think I remembered everything of this movie. Oh, like wow. I didn't need I need I didn't need to watch it at all. If I I could have like just freelanced it, <laughs> freestyled it. I had the exact mm-hmm. opposite experience. Like I couldn't remember oh, wow. any of this. Like I was just like wait, what even to the point where I forgot that they dubbed Rani's voice. I actually interviewed Rani when she was doing press for Talash and I asked her this question about the dubbing. I'll maybe either add the clip now or I'll add the episode in the show notes whether one or the other and I have to say interviewing rani was one of the best times i've had interviewing her i had and you can hear it in my voice i'm so fanboying her all over her and uh, and it's not creepy clearly she likes like the praise it's not i'm i'm not being super creepy uh, <laughs> creepiness dil ke andar tha bahar nahi nikla you know like it was just like pure love uh, you didn't remember anything of this movie i'm just so surprised like i remembered the aati kya khandala song Yeah. But I didn't remember how it came about. I didn't remember wow, okay. like any of it, like nothing. Like I was just going through the entire thing like oh yeah and then this, this happens. <laughs> oh yeah and then that happened. Like it was everything was like brand new information for me. Wow, that's yeah. I that's kind of cool it in was. a way like re- rediscovering this movie. Uh, uh so Joy, where were you on it? So I have an incident when I watched this movie with my entire family when jadu jadu hai tera hi jadu and when rani just goes from like from the back seat to the front seat and just munches on amamu's ear I could feel the embarrassment in my body just drain like you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, it was a throwback to that moment in my childhood <laughs> Childhood dramas uh, on the Khandan podcast. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's that's the reason. <laughs> Sucho is sexually screwed up. <laughs> wow! Uh, finally, an explanation. <laughs> We, this is like therapy session. <laughs> uh, oh, back God. to the movies of nineties. <laughs> What messed up Sucho? <laughs> yeah. Because we've had Rangila, now we have this. So we're just going through all of them one oh, after the other. Yeah. Well, once we discuss Raja Hindustani, we will be fine. <laughs> Wait, what happened to Raja Hindustani? That was like the most clean movie ever. No, no, no. The whole <laughs> night. <laughs> what? They made out in the rain all night long. <laughs> They just made out in the rain like well, the whole that's, night. That's what Dharmesh Darshan could only show, right? Oh, utna hi paisa hai. See, Raja Hindustani is one of those movie I don't remember much about. Like so that yeah. is going to be interesting when I uh, when we revisit it inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god uh so yeah amrita what did you what did you think of gulam watching it for the first time <laughs> I, again <laughs> i actually you know what like there was a lot that i actually liked about this film like i didn't mm. i don't know what i expected going in um i thought i remembered quite a bit turns out i just remembered the clothes like i remembered <laughs> i remember the clothes really well too i yeah i really did like rani's white dress yeah. from atika khandala i really yeah even her like weird like leather dominatrix outfit which is how you first yeah. see her at the train, train tracks yeah. like i remembered all that stuff you know um and amir's belts yeah i remember <laughs> the belts why was he tying like a chain around it <laughs> Wait, it's very it, symbolic. But... It's very symbolic because he's a gulam. <laughs> oh, uh, Amrita, that's how they wear belts in Khandala. You probably don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I remembered all the fashion bits. I remembered like um, his cap. I remembered the leather jacket. I remembered like Rani on the motorcycle. I remembered all of that. But I don't remember like I don't remember the. uh the way that they took the master ji trope from agni path and then they just turned it on its head yeah um i didn't remember like that there was there might have been like a relationship between the fatima character and the hari character that like like it was never fleshed out but i i felt like there was like a relationship there that the movie never dealt into um mm. i didn't remember the beginning part of it where meeta versus uh, fatima is like uh, defending him in court and he's yeah. basically being a little punk ass like i didn't remember that yeah. uh, no, i remembered weirdly enough like as i was watching it i remember the climax um the climax of it where he's getting his ass beaten in public mm. like i remembered yeah. that like i remembered like a bloody armor like i remembered like even after the boxing match like the you know like the makeup because it was just strawberry jam like i remember that very clearly um these are the things mm. that i remember but like all the other things that i don't remember at all like i don't remember like i didn't remember the poor little rich girl story that rani had um i'd forgotten just how sweet that little relationship was between the two of them and how unexpected um i'd forgotten that rani's voice was dubbed and how it just grated on me <laughs> the entire time um yeah it's so bad it's so bad terrible right like there're like dialogues in that film where you can just hear it in rani's voice and you know that she would have just killed it and then like some random woman is saying it and it's just awful Um, and there's no reason because you know yeah. like and like they also dubbed Deepika's voice when she debuted like Rani's dub, dubbed here um Katrina Kaif has been dubbed for 70% of her career you know like there's a lot of these things that you know, it's like I've always had trouble with this kind of thing no but for Deepika uh, and Katrina I understand because like Deepika like just had like really bad hindi and Katrina as well so I can understand that but Rani didn't speak bad Hindi like she was perfectly fine in her first movie like she had like a really like she could speak Hindi so I don't really understand why I think people were just like oh uski awaaz aisi hai and like they just don't get yeah. how sexy it is um yeah. because they're stupid Yeah uh so Joy what about you uh you except for your sexual awakening <laughs> <laughs> with my mom and dad sitting next to me in the as cinema, it should yeah. be as it should be yeah always yeah uh, thankfully i didn't watch american pie with them so. <laughs> <laughs> uh guys um yeah gulam was a big movie for me when i was like this was the period where i was bunking classes and watching movies like in the matinee shows and stuff <laughs> because that's what we used to do in the 90s when we didn't have internet <laughs> or multiple streaming channels you know um but yeah i remember the action scenes i remember the villain i remember amir being such a charmer in throughout this movie he's like you know in every aspect he's doing the comedy the action the drama everything mm. and and um i remember the the i remember the the train chase sequence yeah. man that's such a great sequence and it still holds up and people were making like bonkers rumors about armor actually ran towards the train and everything and no no this was not like, a this was not a rumor this was 
put out by the production team 100% i saw making of and interviews about that amir did it really and i don't know is it not real is it blue screen because no, i have it's trouble. not it's it is green screen it is green screen is i've it? seen like a, yeah I, i've seen a proper green screen uh uh, footage of them, you know, pulling it off. Mm. Um, Amir, uh, that last leap when he run, uh, you know, jumps off the tracks. That is it's, totally it's done really in- well screen. done. Like, like, yeah, it's, it's really, it really, really has well aged, done. aged really well. Uh, like, you can't see any artifacts or you know, um, uh, you know, uh, we watch uh, Corridor Crew, so we know the terminology. Like, yeah. you know, the light effects and the shadows all blend really well. But and uh, and then the very next scene when they're singing Jadu Hai and Amir is singing on his bike <laughs> and yeah. driving around Mumbai, it's just <laughs> completely different. Yeah. yeah. I uh, do you remember the the biker gang? One of the guys has a jacket and he's called Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> and his jacket has it written sexy dixie <laughs> <laughs> and sexy is spelled s e x i e is it I, I didn't know that yeah. i thought it was x i had forgotten that because of the train sequence you know there used to be these rumors that people were trying it in real life and like people were getting hurt mm. and like that yeah. was like a big controversy around the film like back in the days we didn't have twitter mobs and stuff so people weren't like as mad yeah. as people are today i can only imagine imagine what would happen if it ha- it released yeah. today you know there there was um, another thing that like that really took off like you know when Mane Pyar Kia released the whole friend cap yeah. took off right and and the Chuimui came then the teddy bear was a big thing when Gulam came and people were doing the matchstick technique with Atika Khanda yeah. yeah everybody was doing yeah. that but th- just generally, this was a massive movie. Like, this was a big, big, big hit. And also not just like a big hit, like, you know, it made the money like Jurwa 2 and nobody talks about it anymore. This was mm. like a cultural conversation, you know? This was like culturally relevant. People were copying the fashion. This new actress that was amazing kind of came up on screen. I mean, um, Rani was just starting her career at that time and it's really baby rani right she's like super small like tiny and it's like yeah. she looks so fresh and she looks so beautiful and uh, so this was also a remake from uh, from elia e- kazan's on the waterfront um but funnily enough he is dressed like another Marlon Brando character, which is the wild one. So it's just like an interesting that like uh, Amir just picked those two things. And I was like, I'm going to pick that and I pick that. And also it's funny because they make it pretty clear that this is because a lot of the conversations he's having is literally on the waterfront. <laughs> like that's where they're <laughs> yeah. having the conversation. So they're not even, they're like paying homage to the movie and, at that time, you know, the this is produced by the Bhats, who were notorious plagiarizers, um, and they they just were ripping off left and right. And this is a really good remake. Like it doesn't happen. A they lot. actually they actually remade it to a Sanjay Dutt movie in the eighties, uh, and it was yeah. called Kabza, and that didn't really do well. And I think they like second time lucky <laughs> yeah know? which i actually want to watch i was I, I didn't know about kabza but i now want to watch kabza just to see how sanjay that does it but i have a feeling mm-hmm. this might be much much better in terms of movie um, of course because the in kabza the bada bhaiya is played by raj Bapur and i don't think that that will be well yeah so one thing I w- realized while watching it and by 83 mm. episodes of Khandan, 84 episodes of Khandan, I had still not thought of is that how many remakes has Amir done? Have you guys <laughs> thought of that? Okay. I mean, um, how many can we think? I mean, give me like, give me a guess, you know? I would say like at least 50% oh. of his career. You're not, you're not wrong. So I counted it and I'm, so for example, I'm taking out a few out of the equation. So for example, if you take out Mela, uh, Thugs of Hindustan, PK and Dhoom, 
three, which again, these are I wouldn't say ha- are flat out remakes. Although Mela is pretty much Shole, you know, and Doom three is prestige mix with Batman, you know that kind of thing. And Thugs of Hindustan, mm-hmm. a lot of people say Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm taking those out of the cu- equation. And to finish the thought, a lot of times when PK talk, uh, talk about PK, they say that it's uh, a remake of K-Pax, right? Which I don't agree with, but uh, that's what a lot of people have mentioned. So taking those out of the equation, he has nine remakes like straight out flat out remakes and which ones are those like um uh, um okay so i'll say they are uh dil hai ke manta nahi wait i'll i'll go through them right gajini okay uh huh man is a remake yeah uh, yeah ghulam is a remake yeah. akele hum akele tum is a remake uh huh हम है राय प्यार के हम है राय प्यार के आतंक ही आतंक इज रीमेक या सो आई मीन देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ देम एंड आई थिंक देयर इज मोर देन एनी अदर खान ही इज आल्सो डूइंग द फॉरेस्ट गम्प वन या एंड द फॉरेस्ट गम्प वन इज कमिंग सो देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ देम दैट ही इज डन एंड इट्स इट्स ओ बाजी बाजी इज काइंड ऑफ अ यू नो डाई डाई हार्ड रीमेक टू अम सो या देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ देम एंड आई जस्ट अ थॉट आई हैडंट brought together that he's yeah. done so many of them and you know he's like he's seen as the guy that picks the scripts but he doesn't get at least even from me who's like the biggest fan of the khandan well the scripts are coming from somewhere else <laughs> yeah he's basically <laughs> he he's basically anumaliking his career yeah, he's choosing other people's yeah. scripts Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of an interesting thought that I hadn't really, you know, put together until I saw Ghulam. I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> there's a lot more of these. So that was kind of an interesting one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a really good movie. I I I yeah. really really enjoyed watching it. I and I yeah. also really like um, Sharad Saxena in this, the yeah. villain. Yeah. Yes, um, sexy uncle. Yeah, he's playing, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Ronnie, and uh, he's so good because he was always kind of like playing sickle, second fiddle, uh, henchman at that time, and this is probably going to be the best role he's had in his very very long career. Like you know, Ronnie, and he's so good. Like just the idea of putting Amir, who's like tingu mingu, chota sa, you know, like even. and he really try to buff up like you know this is not gajni buffing up but he did try you know you could see it that he put an effort in um like but he's such a behemoth like compared to him right and that final fight scene works because of that i feel yeah um it's the classic like he is the bane or will the yeah. fisk you know totally overpowering and what is the the good guy going to have to overcome that and then it kind of felt like goku and dragon ball z and <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, by the time when he starts to punch he's almost half dead but he's just for some reason you know his chi has come into play <laughs> <laughs> but i mean i i i mean no no me we don't start with the end of the movie but i think let's let's just get into that final uh, final fight scene right because yeah um I I really like these kind of fight scenes where um nobody's an nobody's an action star here nobody is good at action necessarily um but I mean this is the kind of thing that I've seen in you know movies like Gar- Gardesh like Ghatak even I proud to be Indian a movie I've mentioned too many times on this podcast already <laughs> uh but yeah. like you're mentioning Daredevil where it's just like a knock out balls out break everything in the basti kind of fight and people are watching and they're waiting mm-hmm. for somebody to take on this monster that's just been you know has taken over everything and then the masses kind of take courage out of the hero standing up i just love that man it's so bollywood and this it's, it's also like the other thing that i want to point out is why it feels really really real and gritty is that how the basti has been designed like we have seen many basti movies and manmohan desai movies right yeah. and also in dhoom movies and even in mohabbate and sharmista chatterjee set design and everything this basti really feels intimate and real yeah. like the mm. dukans and everything it's really well done yeah. There's a certain like think? dusty claustrophobia about it that like yeah. seems like mm. really real. 
Yeah. Yeah. And and just that the action also that I I really like throughout the movie they really incorporate the fact that these are boxers. Amir is a boxer and mm. he's a terrible boxer <laughs> because a box <laughs> yeah. like you know like he's not a good boxer but there is the element in they incorporate that in the fight scenes and even in the other scenes like when he's extorting money from the cricketer he he punches like like he tries to punch like a boxer and i like that they incorporate that like this is the way these guys are fighting you know and mm-hmm. i i like that they put some thought in that and it's like a 20 minute fight scene which is really long like it's like the entire yeah. climax and it builds it up and i i really enjoyed it i re- it really really worked for me um, oh, what what reminded me this time in this rewatch was how funny it was then and also how funny it still is when that final fight happens and Rani is trying to stop it and uh, Fatima says usse ladne to ye uski fight hai yeah. or something like uski ladai uh, but yeah that's very filmy and but yeah but Rani's character i feel it's such a thankless role to a certain degree no like yeah um i i agree with you amrita i really like the sweet equation of aati kya khandala cuz that part i had forgotten that the whole song is about cheering up rani and i thought that was really sweet but <laughs> yeah i mean uh, let's go back to how it begins right yeah. so amir sort of <laughs> Uh, crashes into her house no 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 from the no, 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 no. you got to go earlier man you got to <laughs> oh, go okay. about the most puddu Bike. biker gang ever <laughs> in the world <laughs> but can i just say like you know that scene where rani takes off the helmet and it's like a shampoo ad yes. where her hair just stumbles out yeah f and a man <laughs> that's like a movie star moment right there yeah Yeah, yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like that's what i miss about actors now you don't have that yeah. with uh, kiara advani you don't have that with anaya no. pande like taking off a helmet and looking like a star right rani had that uh, my cultural reference to that moment is you know when uh, denise richard shows up on friends again a friends reference <laughs> <laughs> and she's like waving her hair and phoebe just gawks at her you know <laughs> questioning her own sexuality that's the moment when rani takes off that helmet and she and like mamu is like mera <laughs> cut again <laughs> but also like uh like amir like i'm so used to seeing the khans opposite women who are like a quarter of their age that it is mm. borderline shocking to see somebody who is that young like rani is like a baby in this film right like she's yeah. what 17 18 years old um but she still looks like she might be amir's peer like amir doesn't look like he's you know like 40 like he looks like he's in mm. his mid 20s or whatever um i'm sure he was like a little bit older but like he looks like he and rani wouldn't make a pervy couple um yeah. they look good together this is- This is this is not Akshay Kumar and who was it again Kiara Advani who was it like that Yeah this is not that uh, you know I agree with you and I, also coming back to the biker gang if your gang is being led by <laughs> Deepak Tijori change gangs <laughs> are like this is <laughs> my favorite part about that was like when they show up all of a sudden like right before the court scene and I was yeah. just like what <laughs> they still exist I thought they went Yeah <laughs> Yeah and I I was also like thinking like you're like Roni ke gundo ko pata nahi hai kitna phuddu gang hai like they, they get scared like 40 bike aa gayi 150 cc wali bikes you know like I, I, and then like there is a perfect line when you know um Siddhu or uh, Amir is Mama. you know putting him down he says hey chat chat like yeah <laughs> <laughs> that was so and also like these guys are doing this daska daur which is like yeah. daska daur karega and it's like am i supposed to know what this internal game you guys play as a gang like daski daur <laughs> yeah. like what is this but then beside that point he he's ran apparently this race lots of times and he's run, won it lots of times apparently deepak tijori mm-hmm. i'm talking about and he's running it with leather boots leather pants and like this jacket that is like 50 sizes too big for him like <laughs> <laughs> why would you wear all of that shit when you're running against yeah. a train it was like really really stupid but uh, yeah he's a he's a terrible gang member but that so th- and then mm. and then his heel gets caught in the rain track yeah. train tracks <laughs> <laughs> 
इनसेन सो दिस इज द गैंग दैट रानी हैज चोजन टू बी पार्ट ऑफ एज अ रिच गर्ल राइट सो दैट आई थिंक देर इज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ अ थ्रो बैक ऑन अ नॉट टू जोजीता वही सिकंदर वेन दीपक तिजोर इज चार्ली गैंग इज द पचामा छाप इन दिस मूवी मे बी मे बी मे बी सो या यू आर सेंग दैट this is the gang this rich girl has kind of joined and mm-hmm. atika khandal has about cheering that that's where you are right no uh, after the chase happens and the police come and they all flee and then uh, rani falls in sort of um, a crushing uh, crush moment when she sings chatu hai and then after the song she's still staring at amir's jacket and amir barges in <laughs> to their house and then sort of the, through the window and <laughs> the best dialogue is in this movie that i still remember is ghar mat ka tera bo kharcha khel hai and then uh, anupam kher's brother raju what is his name? raju kher raju kher he comes in all drunk and here come my baby <laughs> राजू खेर ड्रंक इज प्लेइंग अनुपम खेर सोबर सो या दे हैव अ सोर्ट ऑफ अ डोमेस्टिक इंसिडेंट लाइक फाइटिंग अबाउट Uh, why she is not paying uh, proper respect to his guest and all that shit and then so they parch out and they then amir sings in his own voice to please his lady i also really like that idea where uh, amir says you know i i look at these big apartments and these places and i think everybody's happy yeah and uh, mm-hmm. rani says you know no happiness doesn't i mean Obviously it's a bit absurd if you're rich you have more chances to be happy but I think it's just Rani's performance that kind of brings that sadness to this you know poor little girl up in her tower she's literally playing you know uh, Rapunzel in that scene you know in a way that you have to climb the tower to get to her It is Rani's performance but sadly it's not her voice Yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um Oh on the wiki page it says it's uh, voiced by Mona Ghosh Shetty. Yeah. Uh, she's done a lot of dubbing uh, work in her career. I mean, so, I don't yeah. have anything against Mona Ghosh Shetty's voice. I, I just feel like Rani's voice is iconic, you know what I mean? Um and even yeah. then like you know even when Gulam came out I remember thinking that they made a mistake because I'd seen Raja ki aayegi barat by then and I thought that her voice was oh. great. This is amazing guys. I've gone to Mona Ghosh Shetty's page and this is amazing. So she's done voice work for a lot of actors including Katrina Kaif in Sarkar, <laughs> um Lara Dutt in Andaz, Giselle Monteiro in Love Aajkal, Nargis Fakhri in Rockstar. Wait, why are you dubbing Lara Dutt? What's the point of dubbing Lara Dutt? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, Amisha Patel in Kaho Na Pyar Hai, Kajol What? in Dushman, Bipasha Basu Basu in Raz and Bipasha Basu in Jessam as well. Wait so the only thing uh, Amisha Patel can be proud of in her career she didn't even do the voice <laughs> Yeah Wait she also dubbed Deepika's voice in Om Shanti Om wow. Hari yeah wow what a career man what a career Yeah yeah wow I mean we got to get props man we've loved these movies right and I didn't know I didn't know that mm. Amisha Patel was dubbed you know so she she slipped through the cracks a few times there you know so it's quite good um yeah okay um where were we the what do you guys think of sexy sexy dixie <laughs> yeah which is like a like a madhur bandarkar type of gay character right like that's what yeah, i know yeah. down here <laughs> uh, <laughs> i've got my streaks so i'm gay yeah, now yeah. And, and i'm going to make a joke about butting into the villain with my tire yeah i also noticed the focus on that joke yeah um yeah, yeah. terrible and also like how does this daska daski door work so one train goes and then everybody's just hanging around until the next train comes like you know like <laughs> Yeah. Uh guys, this is all. Yeah, awkward <laughs> conversations with this gang you don't get along with, you know. Yeah. The the train is late by 50 minutes. You know? But I yeah. really like Could... the scene where like he is getting ready and like they see the the train coming and then very silently like all the people on the motorcycles just move their motorcycles back like off the track. <laughs> yeah. Um that was funny. But can we talk about uh the brothers like his brother and yes. her brother 
Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, the the reveal one or the him and uh, that's the guy that plays Vomkesh Bakshi, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Rajat uh-huh. Kapoor. Yeah. Tie in with Tolly Folly. So if you want to <laughs> listen to Tolly Folly, head over <laughs> to you podcast Bollywood edition. Uh, yeah. So what do you want to? What did you want to say about the brother relationships? No, like I really like I didn't remember anything about that. I didn't remember that Rajat Kapoor was playing the brother. I didn't remember the dynamics of that relationship. But I liked it so much. Like it is so fleshed out, you know, from the childhood trauma yeah. to who they become as uh, as adults. And Rajat Kapoor yeah. gets to have that conversation with Amir where he's talking about being an adult and about making the choices that you make and um, why he's with Ronnie uh, mm. and why he kind of looks down upon, you know, upon themselves and their dad. And also like where he's trying to like, where you can see that he loves his brother, right? Like both of them love each other. But also when like Amir is talking to Fatima, and he says that, you know, like, I know who my brother is, you know, and he's like so angry, but he still yeah. loves his brother. I felt like that was such a real emotion to see. And you don't really see that on screen that much in like Hindi cinema, right? Like where, like either it's like very mm. like sappy, like, ye mera bhai hai, ye mera paramatma hai, like that kind of stuff. Or else it's yeah. like, tumne mujhe dhoka diya, tum mere bhai nahi ho, tum, you know, like, like that kind of a thing. But in this way, like they're angry and disappointed in each other, but they also understand where the other person is coming from and they love each other and what the two of them have gone through nobody else knows yeah i think the it really came through on this viewing that both of these children were broken by trauma yeah you know and they've kind of like taken a totally different path and like i think that's also the reason why you know he, and because he was younger as well right yeah. amir's character yeah. situ was much younger when that all happened and uh, but jay who is uh, rajat kapoor's character he was the older brother and all the responsibility fell on him to raise his younger brother and raise himself as well as the father figure uh, and he fully conscious of the, the the story of his father in knowing and how he formed his opinion about the world and what he needs to do to build a future versus Amir is sort of still protected by the shadow of his elder brother even though he knows that he works for Ronnie and he is doing chores for Ronnie but then he also has this whole world built in his mind that his father was a good person he still has this conversation with himself until, you know, when Hari comes into the picture and sort of re- jolts his mem- memory back yeah. and then he has that con- confrontation with his brother. And like what you said, Amrita, like about the conventional bhais that we get to see in Hindi movies of the 80s and the mm-hmm. 70s, whatever, you know, Paramatma figure and all of that. And I think what was very beautifully done in this was when after every conversation, um, Jay would give Munna and he would call him Munna, not Siddhu. Always yeah. calls him Munna, and and like uh, after every conversation, he ends the conversation by giving him money, yeah. and that whole conversation changes when Munna rejects the money at the last yeah. the last it's, scene where they meet. You know, it's it's really beautifully done. It's so well, and I I think also like the the, the idea that why this the reason is that Jay has connected so strong with Ronnie is because mm-hmm. Ronnie becomes a surrogate father for yeah. a girl who is strong, who is strong. Yeah. And try, he's trying to get uh, Sidhu back into Ronnie's uh, c- c- kind of like group. And that's like the ultimate validation. You know, he says, Oh, dusre bando ko das saal lag gai. Tu unka khaas, tu Ronny ka khaas banda ban gaya, you know. Because in a way, he wants to uh, remake that family that he lost, you know. Yeah. And I thought yeah. those were just like kind of interesting thoughts that uh, at that, when I initially watched it, I I didn't really connect with. But now, years later, and I think also Rajat Kapoor's, a performance brings that kind of sadness, that kind of loyalty, unwavering loyalty to Ronnie. And he, I think he understood the character much, much better than, uh, you know, some other actor. And I, knowing him, he probably put the thought process and the background work in it to play what could have been mm. like just a minor side character that we've seen so many times. But I think his performance brought all of that in. And then we also have then the mirror image of Rani's brother, um, Played by uh, Akshay Anand, Hari, 
um which but i also thought was kind of a good performance no it was but also like i really enjoyed that first meeting between him and amir because amir is like tu kaun si duniya ka hai and then he says that yeah. main isi duniya ka hu but the thing is they're not yeah. they're not from the same world you yeah. know like hari is a rich kid who left his home to do like good for the world whereas siddhu is from like this you know from this basti that is under the thrall of this the strong man like he lives in a completely different bombay you know like we were talking in the last episode about bo- the fabulous lives of bollywood wives and stuff and like how they live in a bubble is what sujoy said um yeah and that is what basically it is you know like even though rani and um and akshay anand come from a broken family and they understand what pain is on a on a personal level the fact is that the way they live their life in the on the 22nd you know on the penthouse floor of a high rise in mumbai is fundamentally different from like the life that um that amir and his brother lived in the basti so like that was like you know like tiny throwaway lines like that like i really like i feel like this was actually part and parcel of the bhat movies in the 90s you know you got to see like a mm. lot of these tiny little things in movies like sadak and um um you know what are the other ones like uh gulam and uh, even in dil hai manta nahi you know like yeah. they talk a lot about these different um uh class struggles and these different uh different types of violence and things that the characters undergo even i mean there there was like tamanna and yeah, zakham as well right. zakham i was yeah. going to bring up yeah. there's there's this small kind of like even that they show that he's working in a cinema they show like mm. a real kind of real sense of the world that they're living in and uh, i think the buds did bring that where you know they were always for me like the, the other side of the spectrum of yashraj where yeah. it was very much mountains and cleaned up and sanitized and there was some sort of raw and realness to vishesh films that i i you know there was nobody else really doing it they were almost like you could see that they were coming from of that um what do you call it the art scene you know that there was that link to it mm. that uh, yeah. they he's mahesh but totally sold out but he still wanted to kind of harken back to you know show you no i i am a real filmmaker i want to show you something real and i do think in golam that sometimes comes through um yeah So, I think the uh, other- Mukesh Bhatt and Mahesh Bhatt did come from that background right they did like start yeah. with Saranch and yeah. all of those movies. Yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah. Wa- one piece of one piece of trivia that I found out about Akshay Anand that he was his real name or his birth name is John Gardner and he was discovered by actor Devanand so What? he took up his screen name called Akshay Anand oh. uh, and my earliest child memory like childhood memory is of his uh, 13 episode tv series on doordarshan called indra dhanush which was based on time travel and it has a karan johar cameo in it he is <laughs> not a cameo he he's actually playing a small child in that movie What? it's oh. great yeah it's on uh, doordarshan's youtube channel if you want to check it out oh wow wow um i think The, uh, another main thing that also kind of uh, stood out to me how good the songs are uh, oh, in yeah. Nagolam like i except for one of them yeah tujhko kya <laughs> is that <laughs> the... i mean tu- tujhko kya is okay right like um, it's kind of like uh, the ja- ja- jojita vai sikandar jawa ho yaro ye tumko hua kya kind of song uh. that mamu song like we are the best what you gonna do and we are the mawalis of the town etc etc Yeah also um, Tujhko uh, kya also does he uh, it establishes the movie and the characters quite well if you have to think mm. if you go through it like like Avis played this kind of maskara nutcut kind of character hoodlum kind of thing a lot of times um but they also establish that he hates fire that it scares him and they, yeah. that he's a boxer so it does do a few of these things uh, that uh, you know in terms of storytelling so props to that at least but which which song were you mentioning that isn't a good one the recap song where he is like i i skipped through it like it wasn't doing much <laughs> like the, the sad one is like the sad one basically uh, apna mohabbat pe 
अब नाम मोहब्बत के दादा नहीं सॉन्ग आई मीन क्या नाम है मोहब्बत के जो भी नाम है जो भी नाम है छोड़ो इसको बट आई रियली 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 लाइक जादू है इट्स लाइक इट्स अ रॉक लव बैलेट फॉर द एजेस आई रियली लव दैट सॉन्ग even though it, it has memories associated with it but <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did you think of the songs amrita um apart from aarti kya khandala like i honestly don't have any nostalgia for any of them ah oh, okay not even uh, aankhon se teri sab waste hai no. <laughs> aankhon se teri is pretty good too no yeah <laughs> thodi sardi bhi hai <laughs> i love the i i love the that song uh, aankhon se teri because it's basically you know like a let's bone song you know in bollywood you have let, let's bone uh-huh. songs and then they basically have a song instead so that's what this song is and like the I, the setup for the song is they kind of suddenly are they're on a date and they run in a car and uh, because to hide from the rain and then they come out of the rain and the song starts and rani was wearing like a full ass gala gown for that date with siddu and i was like wow that is like <laughs> doing a lot of effort for and her. siddu just had a siddu just had a atma samman wala conversation yeah. with hari yeah like <laughs> five minutes for the ago. date <laughs> yeah so he's like now i'm going to bang your sister in a car <laughs> <laughs> and then also like i like jadu hai because it, oh, it does have that blue screen uh, which is it badly but at that time it was really cool seeing the way yeah. it the movement of that um, bike and then amir's just kind of singing a, it's a thing right in bollywood actors singing on a bike you know so we've seen it quite yeah. a few times but i think the way it was shot with the blue screen was really kind of new and i think that was cool and then also i like, mean sharuk did it for real though right in <laughs> so many songs yeah 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 I, i know he did but like this the the movement of the camera i think brought something to it uh, i do mm. think that it's funny that this song does two things before they become culturally popular first of all um that scene that gave you a sexual awakening yeah. um <laughs> basically <laughs> You kind of milk this joke, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, somebody was milking something. Um, <laughs> go on, go on. The second bit. <laughs> um, so uh, basically, Amir and Rani are doing what Kanye and Kim did much, much later in their song. <laughs> if you remember that one and then the second uh, thing amir is doing the sexy woodcutter before captain america so this yeah. movie does do things before that they become popular so i got to give it props that way <laughs> he got wood <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh and atika khandala is still the best song sung by a khan right like there's yeah. no other one that, i mean we we had a long chat about uh, uh, chandi ki dal pe and we'll probably get to josh one day too um but this is still the best one and it still works and it's sung quite well <laughs> like again mm. it's uh, uh, in which movie that they what was it we were making fun of was it in kabhi khushi kabhi gham right that uh, amitabh references and sings aati kya kandala which uh, just yeah. goes to show how much of a big thing this song was oh yeah for yeah. sure this was th- like it was one of the main reasons why gulam was big as big a hit as it was yeah, yeah. like uh, the promos were running it and this was one of those highlight moments that everybody was yeah. going to be you know um looking forward to in the movie and it, it kind of uh like the two songs are back to back almost you know you have jadoo yeah. hai and then one scene and then you just have uh, aati ka khandala yeah and i think i think that's where i think because uh, you I, i don't know have you guys seen on the waterfront have yes. you seen that movie yeah. um i mean it's quite like a uh, it's kind of a dense movie right like yeah. there's a lot happening mm. quite quickly the story beats and all that it's there's no wastage of time whereas when you do a bollywood movie you have to add a romantic track to it you have to add, add this biker gang to it you have to uh, add a lot of other things and then that's where it kind of starts struggling so if you have to add these really good songs from jatin lalit that they've composed uh, you have to kind of just throw them in the middle and there's almost no break between the two of them so it's i think that's where it becomes a bit jarring but it works i think it overall it still works for me um it's it's funny where because 
what do you guys think of Vikram Bhatt as a director? Um, because he's very. When you look at Ghulam, he's very competent. Yeah. You know? um, and like I, because I, I watched a lot of Bhatt movies, and you could feel that Vikram Bhatt did something different from because. At that time, Bhats were getting, especially because a lot of them were directed by Mahesh Bhatt. Mahesh Bhatt was getting tired of, you could feel feel it in the movies. There was no, mm. no excitement left for him. And there was no excitement left for the audience to see another Mahesh Bhatt movie. And Vikram really brought new energy, new kind of a vision to his movies. And it's not that this was his first movie. He did, um, he did Fareb. Remember Fareb? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a big... I only remember that. Yeah, and uh, I think he also did... Uh, what was it? Janwar or Janbaz? Something with... Uh, Janam, Janam. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he did Madhosh with uh, Faisal, I think. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So he had been working. It's not... And uh, yeah, and I remember that Amir appreciated Vikram back in Madhosh even. I remember the interviews. Hmm. Uh, so he had been working, but it all kind of came together in Golam with... Uh, Amir being a bit more hands-on at that time in his career and like a good script because obviously it was written by, you know, one of the greatest screenwriters in history, uh, uh, the original at least. And um, just kind of the production value and then Mahesh actively stepping away. So, and yeah. what I what I really, uh, like this time I appreciated with my 2020 eyes um joke about 2020 vision but uh, anyway <laughs> uh was like uh, uh, the cinematography of this movie is very of its time but it's still like um it's top notch yeah. like yeah. the light effects the lighting it's, like it's very super, very yeah. harsh lights and like when amir wakes up from a nightmare or or yeah. at the waterfront as <laughs> you said like uh, the reflection of the water on on their face um yeah it it's like it's a look it's a yeah. d- definite look like also even in Atika Khandala they are top lit and so you can see like a white sort of halo on Rani and Amir when they say like you know Barsat ka season hai yeah. Khandala ja ke karna it's, it's brilliant and um, looking at uh, the cinematographer Te- Dharma Teja he's done work from like uh, RGV's Rath in back in the day to yeah. Uh, Krodh and all sorts he's really good and he's done Rangila as well you can see it you can really see that yeah. it's the kind of same cinematographer you can really see it mm. uh, and Vikram Bhatt's done quite a few good movies or at least successful movies but um, I'm just kind of reading he did Raz which you recently watched right uh, Amrita mm-hmm. well, well, you no, watched Raz right no, That's what we're you're... going to watch it Oh, you're going to watch it? <laughs> two, is that for a podcast? Or is, that, is that for a podcast um, or something you're so, working on? Yeah, so Beth um, and uh, this other friend of ours called Aditi Sen. Um, Aditi is a professor in Toronto and she has um, edited this book called Bollywood Horrors. And it's uh, basically a collection of essays about um, horror movies from Bollywood. And, uh, it's a really great book, but it's also like an academic text. So it's like super expensive. So if you are interested, then you should ask your library to get it or else I think they're going to come out with a paperback, uh, sometime in the future. But right now it's just hardcover and it's super expensive, but it's really great. And there are like amazing essays in it. And Aditi wrote about Raz, the Vikram Bhatt movie. And, um, she had, like, she was making all these arguments that I'd never even thought of before, you know, like she was saying that it's basically a retelling of, um, two things, like there's What Lies Beneath, the Michelle Pfeiffer movie, but also, um, the, the tale of Satya, um, of, uh, Satyavan and, uh, uh, Savitri. Savitri. And, uh, I had never thought of it that way. And she made some excellent points in her essay about it. So if Aditi is free, like right yeah. now she's like super busy, but if she's free sometime in the future, then I hope that Beth and I can sit down with her and we can just talk about uh, horror movies in general and uh, her essay. So, yeah. So he, he's like, so Vikram Bhatt is really like leaned into the horror, especially in the yeah. later part of his career. And I think he's been mostly successful with that. But uh, he's got a prolific career as a writer, producer, director. Now he's even an actor. He's in a miniseries called Zindabad. 
So he's been around, but I don't think he would he was ever able to get the success and acclaim that Ghulam has. Um, so mm. he's uh, kind of like followed the trajectory of Mahesh, but in a way, like yeah. in a way, no, right now he is in a place where Mahesh Bhatt was when sort of Ghulam was coming out. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and apparently they're not related. No, they're not. Uh, which I didn't know. I thought they were like like a, he's the a, a, his parents are cinematographers. Oh, okay. So that says something. I mean, yeah, that that shows in a way. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Any any other random thoughts? Any other things that you wanna talk about, Ghulam? Um. I I just wanted to say like uh the final fight when. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Amrita was saying it was all strawberry jam. I was quite impressed by the blood makeup, to be honest. And I thought, like, Sh- Sharukh will approve of it. Approved you know? by Sharukh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no uh, blood in the teeth, though, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. No bloody teeth. I saw. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also, like, one of the one scene that I have completely forgotten and how amazing it looks visually is the whole uh, flashback sequence being done in that grayscale sort of uh, effect and then the fire yeah. part coming yeah. out as totally color and that sort of shows what stuck in young Sidhu's mind you know yeah. he sees the death of his father like that it's it's brilliant yeah and also Ashutosh Rana man yeah. like I, that part I'd forgotten that he is the yeah. guy and such a cool twist to that story that you know the Dalip Tiles uh, uh, image and his respect is all a lie you know like mm. a lot of times you know when you have like for example the doom three and jackie shroff can't get the bank loan and he just shoots himself in front of his kids that's like guy you turn it up to 11 you know but here it i kind of get it like you know when you just lose everything that you have and you kind of get spit in them in your face and just ashutosh rana man in 98 by the way he did zakham dushman tamanna and Ghulam in the same year isn't that wow. insane Insane, uh, and what a and he was like known for these like powerful, um, uh, you know, smallish roles. And I mean, uh, he literally mm, had uh, one scene in this film, but yeah, what an amazing scene that was! Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Um, the other th- go ahead. So I was like, uh, the Ashutosh um, Rana connection is also uh, rings true for like Mita Vashesh. So both of them, I think, were in um, uh, Swabhiman, which was again made by Muke- uh, Mahesh Bhatt for TV. It was a huge ass like 90s TV show, which brought so many uh, great actors to the forefront. Like, um, I think that was the first time I saw Harsh Chaya in that yeah. show. Uh, Ketu Gidwani was in it. Mita Vashist was in it. Um, Ashutosh uh, Rana was also in it. And also uh, Kumut Mishra. Uh, who we, we've mm. seen so in so many movies as well. So, yeah. um, I, like, I would wholeheartedly like to thank wasn't, Vishesh Films for bringing all these actors. Wasn't into Irfan lives. also in it? Uh, I can't exactly remember if Irfan was in Swabhiman or not. Mm. The the uh, sequence that I also wanted to mention was the boxing sequence where there's this whole mm. build up with uh, and this is funny because Kala Tiger <laughs> yeah, Kala Tiger which pretty he's Baga. pretty much Baga he, from Lagan yeah yeah he's pretty much uh, a style like Prince Nasim Ahmed in back in the day when he was a <laughs> famous boxer um, which is uh, which is great um, it's funny because uh, this is a change with on the waterfront because on the waterfront this has happened before the movie happened Mm. so uh, like uh, uh, the Sidhu character played by Marlon Brando has already lost that match and it's put him on the trajectory that he's in where he's an enforcer for the Ronnie character and there's this Mm. amazing scene where you know it's that classic line of I could have been somebody I could have been a contender so that doesn't happen but it still works in this convention because they amp up the Bollywoodness of it and Amir Mm. gets beat up so bad that he loses his Tapori accent (laughs) afterwards like he's like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like he's pre- speaking Shud Hindi after that, so that I thought was kind of kind of cool. Um, it's like uh, Ayala Jayala is gone. Yeah, Atma Samman came. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
so by the way i hate boxing scenes in bollywood because i love boxing on screen and never yeah. ever ever has bollywood done it justice and not even with fucking tiger shroff he can't even no there's only one man and i've already <laughs> mentioned his movie <laughs> with the jamal i'm bringing oh, sohail khan back <laughs> because aryan the unbreakable is a decent boxing movie uh, again that's two. oh like um, speaking of boxing though sorry to break mm-hmm. the rhythm but i did like one particular scene and uh, i think i saw a, a lehre tape long long time back of this with sharad saxena talking about his you know that one uncut scene so they are filming the boxing scene and it's all handheld and it's all close ups right but then they go to the wide shot that the final blow has happened and he drops and it's in slow mo yeah. he drops and he bounces back from that drop it's a a yeah. a, a visual delight yeah Although I have to mention I have not seen Mukkaba so that might be one mm. that's good so I know Oh that, yeah you should you should Yeah I know Mukhabas. that the actor went through a lot of mehnat to do that so I have not yes. seen that Um yeah that's that's it for, I don't have any else I mean I really liked it man it's on it's on uh, YouTube it's not available on streaming it what used to be on either Prime or Netflix but I'm not sure everything seems to be going away um mm. but there's a really good HD print on YouTube um but unfortunately it doesn't have subtitles so um but it's so good gulam man i'm i'm really like i'm i'm so happy i rewatched it and i've seen it many many times i've seen on the waterfront many times and it's still it it still kind of comes together there are issues it's wonky in bits you know um uh, rani just gets sidelined and she's just crying in the second half of the movie uh, but it has a lot of like visual flourishes it has it's really well written it's a great performance by amir khan i would say it's one of his yeah. best performances um and yeah it totally worked for me Am- amrita what do you what do you think about the performance of amir this is one of the best though right it has to be yeah i mean this is like probably one of my favorite amir performances um i mean i liked it so much i didn't even complain once this podcast about his pants <laughs> yeah. uh, or make a joke about his height <laughs> Yeah, but it works here, right? Uh, the height works here. Yeah, like, so it yeah. makes sense. Yeah, um, like my sort of take back from this movie were twofold. Like uh, when this movie ended, I kind of you know took me back to that era of watching movies in single screen theaters. When the movie has ended, the fight has done. The fight has been won by the good guy, and Atika Khandala plays again, and that's cue for the audience to walk out. You know, <laughs> and uh, that was a, a a thing, right? When you were watching, and the end credits start to play, there are people who are sat like me, who are waiting for some sort of a miracle to happen, or or the other people who just walk out. And the second thing is when all the end credits um, end. they sort of end it with remember it's a vishesh films private limited presentation <laughs> <laughs> i'm like okay i'll remember that <laughs> okay cool that's it for this episode um amrita where can people find you online you can find me on twitter at amrita iq or on youtube at amrita by the book sioy I'm on Twitter and Instagram at 93k and you can follow the Khandan podcast on Instagram as well at Khandan podcast. Yes, drop us a note of what you want us to do and also like I love people always um you know talking about the show on uh, Twitter but also if you have a question if you have a comment drop us an email at upodcast@gmail.com because my admin is terrible and then I forget to bring them up when we're actually recording so when it's uh, when it's an email i have it in front of me and then it just kind of works better so do drop us an email drop us a review on apple uh, apple podcast it's been a while we haven't heard from you any good things there so if you get a chance uh, do that and uh, we'll be back in a in a week's time with a new episode thanks for listening guys hi <laughs> guys